Hi, I just want to cover some of the tools that I use in Photoshop and Painter. So I'll just make a new document. Okay, so mostly what I do is paint. Um, and I'm not going to cover any of the photographing tools or anything like that. So essentially the brushes I use are these brushes here. Now I got these from uh, the Imagine Effects magazine. Uh, I think it was not the most recent one, but the one before. Um, if anyone wants these, just email me and I will send them to you. Um, so essentially I have this sort of hard round soft brush, it's kind of weird, um, I'll just pick a color that's not white so you can see it. Um, so essentially it's like the opacity is mapped to pen pressure and it's kind of got a grain to it and it's kind of fuzzy at the same time but you can also sort of get like a hard edge with it but it's kind of fuzzy and the smaller you go the harder edge you can get so it's kind of like when you're cleaning up your lines later on or your edges you can get quite a hard edge but it doesn't have that like total crisp thing that the hard round brush has um, I do use the hard round brush um, usually just for blocking in colors if I just go to that now whoops, you'll see the difference it's like you know there really is not much variation to that now I can turn on other dynamics and you know you will get that but it, it's just not quite the same um, so I don't know I tend to use this this brush for blending um, mostly and usually I will go in and change the spacing because it's a little bit too much for my liking I put it around 15 usually and I don't know I just like it it's good it's really good for blending and skin tones and I tend to end up doing a lot of portraits for some reason so it, it's really good for that um, so that's kind of a brush I use a lot of the time. Um, there's a few other brushes in here that I use. There's this one. It's kind of like, it's good for like clouds and stuff, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of good for clouds and, and foliage in the distance and things like that. Um, and just adding a bit of texture, like if you, if you lower the opacity, you know, you can just add like a little bit of texture and a little bit of variation to something. And it just gives it that sort of painterly feel. Um, there's this brush which is kind of cool for I'll just up the opacity again it's kind of cool for like um, sort of leaves and stuff I guess and maybe a little bit of texture again it's kind of just another texture brush um, this can kind of be used for hair I don't really use it though um, I tend to just paint my hair manually I, I tend not to like add details using texture brushes it's not something I'm really into now this brush is pretty cool because you can use this to just sort of add like texture to rock or something like that and I, I do use this um, this is a sort of grass brush and you can use it as a stamp to sort of add like a grass tuft or you can just sort of you know lightly do this again I tend to not really use texture um, sort of shape brushes so most thing I tend to just stick with either a hard round brush or this brush for blending and and that's kind of all I use. I mean, I, I, I usually just go in there and get really small and detailed and paint. I mean, if you look at some of my paintings, you'll kind of see how I work. Um, it takes a lot longer this way, like, you know, painting the details yourself. But I don't know. I just kind of enjoy the process more. I, I kind of feel like, you know, digital gives you a lot of leeway to start with. You know, you've got like undos <laughs> for one. And I don't know, it, it, there's kind of like a, a fine line between what's cheating and not cheating. So, those are the brushes I tend to use. I tend not to use much else. Occasionally I'll use the blur tool, maybe to blur the edge of a shadow. Occasionally I'll use the dodge tool just to brighten a highlight that, you know, but not really. So, I tend to, um, I'll just, I'll just paint something so you can see quickly. Um, I'll just do, say, hmm, no, it's on the dodge brush. Yeah, I'll just, um, chuck some blue in there and even with this brush I can sort of already start to blend but if I really want to blend something out right like and I, I'm, I'm not happy with the blending of this for whatever reason or I just want it to be super super smooth um, some people will use the um, the blur tool I really don't like using it so what I tend to do is I save this file out and then I'll open it in Painter. Um, which 
So yeah, I'll open it in Painter, and then I use one of Painter's tools to blend it. Usually, okay. So I'll take one of um, Painter's blenders, usually sort of a soft, sort of blender stump or something like that. Um, you may find that you have to sort of collapse these layers. It's a sort of a weird thing. painter does because it uses the background for blending but you see like this blending brush now it it kind of gives you that if I make it a bit, a bit bigger it kind of allows you to blend really start to blend and smooth out those those tones there and I don't know I just I tend to switch between both applications because now I've got like kind of like that smooth gradient and it's hard to achieve in Photoshop. It's not impossible to achieve in Photoshop, but it's a lot easier to just switch into this and just pull out the blender and just blend across. As long as you, you make sure not to blur your edges, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I just tend to use this and, and for water and things as well, you know, just to get that sort of that sort of watery effect. Kind of helps. Um, so I switch in and out. Mostly I do most of my work in Photoshop and all my detailing I do in Photoshop. Um, but I do use Painter just to come in and blend values and tones. I also use it to sketch um, a lot of the time if I'm going to do a sketch for my uh, image. I will tend to come into Painter because you've got like, you know, I'm, I'm using Painter 11. You have um, the real pencils and, and real brushes <clears throat> and they are pretty cool because you can just tilt your, your tablet on the side here and, and start to shade and, and then, you know, go in and draw something. So, I, I don't know. I tend to use Painter for a few things. Inking, um, pencils, drawing. I mean, playing around with the oil brushes is pretty fun. Um, but, I don't know. I, it, it doesn't suit the kind of things that I like to do, really. Um, because I kind of... Oh, that's a blender. I, 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 I don't know. I prefer to um, work in a sort of more digital medium and not traditional. I'm not traditionally trained or anything. So even though like the oils are fun to play with, they're kind of cool for impressionist stuff. But again, when I go in and try and do detailed work, you know, this, this brush will only go so far before it just doesn't even paint anymore at one pixel. You know, it only sort of works on certain angles. You, you really can't go in there and do pixel by pixel details, which is kind of what I do in my work. So yeah, I tend to just use painter for blending and sketching and playing around with traditional mediums but when I'm actually creating a, an image I'll usually go into Photoshop and then take it into Painter to do that blending and then go back into Photoshop and you know sort of switch between the two apps so really I don't do anything that um, that different to most people um, I tend to just stick with one or two brushes keep it simple and um, yeah so that's pretty much it I hope this was uh, helpful to someone and I'll make some more videos soon probably of me doing some speed paintings or something like that Thanks. See ya.